Know exactly what skills you want to improve but struggling to make it happen? Tired of stagnation? Just doing your drills isn't going to cut it. This video will show you the process that ensures that you create change that lasts. Hi, this is Andrew Sheaf with Mastering Flow. I help you dramatically improve your swimming by providing simple, actionable strategies that you can implement today. Best of all, you can do so without the need for in-person coaching. Let's get better today. I'm going to let you in on a dirty little secret that no one acknowledges. It's going to make a major impact on how you approach your swimming moving forward. Drills don't work. At least how most people do them. Here's what they do. They perform a bunch of drills all at once in the beginning of their workout. Maybe those drills are chosen for a specific reason, maybe not. Then they go swim the rest of the workout, maybe thinking about their skills, maybe not. It doesn't work because they're not spending their time using the most effective drills, and they're not spending their time freestyle engaged in what those drills are supposed to be teaching them. Of course, I'm not just going to tell you what's wrong. I'm going to provide you with a simple solution that you can implement today. Here's the three-step process that I use to ensure that skills change as fast as possible and as dramatically as possible. First, you're going to use as few exercises as possible. Only the best. Secondly, you're only going to perform those exercises, but you're going to do so in a bunch of different ways. Third, you're going to be constantly integrating freestyle swimming into that process. Pretty simple, huh? Of course, simple isn't always easy. To make sure you understand what each step entails and why it matters, we're going to go into each one of these steps in further detail. Then I'll put it all together with a practical example so you can see what it actually looks like. First step is to use as few exercises as possible. Let's say you're a coffee snob, or a wine snob, or a pizza snob. Would you drink crappy coffee just for variety? Of course not. You'd pick the best coffee you can afford and you'd drink that every day. You need to think about the drills you choose in the same way. Pick the best ones, use those, and ignore the rest. You don't need a bunch of different drills. You don't want a bunch of different drills. If they're not as good as another option, it's literally a waste of time and energy. For more on how to pick the best drills, click here. You want to be a minimalist. Find the best drills to solve your specific problem and double down on them. That's how you make progress. Now you may be thinking, what if I get bored? Great question, which brings us to step number two. You want to perform the same drills, but in different contexts. Just because you're using a minimal number of drills doesn't mean you're just going to perform the same thing over and over and over again. That would be boring, and it also wouldn't be very productive. You'd learn because you're using good drills, but you wouldn't keep learning. By using the same drill in different ways, you're going to pick up on all of the little nuances that the skill entails. It's the novelty of the different variations of the drill that exposes this nuance. By getting exposed to all the nuance, you're going to develop mastery over the skills you're trying to learn. Mastery isn't possible when you're doing 12 different drills. This sounds great, but how do you actually do it? You can take a drill and then you can change the speed at which you perform it. Get faster each repetition, get faster within a repetition, or just go fast. If it's a floating exercise, how fast can you get into the desired positions? Or how slowly can you get into the desired positions? You can also change the stroke count. Take more, take less, and then alternate between taking more and taking less. You can also change the gear you use. Use paddles, use fins, use a buoy, use a snorkel, and then use them in a bunch of different ways. There's an entire playlist with over 60 ideas for how to integrate different types of gear into your swimming, and you can find that right here. Use it. Of course, you can combine all three and do them in sequence or do them at the same time. The key idea is rather than changing the drills you use, use the best ones and then change how you perform them. You'll still be working on the best drills and you'll continue to learn. The third step is to constantly integrate full stroke swimming. Remember the goal, you're trying to improve your freestyle. As I talked about before, drills are perfect for helping you feel new ways of moving through the water. You have to take those sensations with you into your swimming if you want to create real and lasting change. The more times you can pair the exercises and the swimming together, the faster you're going to get great results. It's all about going back and forth. You transfer what you learn during the drill to how you perform during the freestyle. Now, with the freestyle, just as with the drills, you don't want to do the same thing over and over again. You want to switch it up. You want to practice in different contexts as well. Add speed. 
change your stroke count, use gear. You can also change the distances up and you can also combine all of these strategies. They all serve to expand your learning. They also help you learn to transfer what you feel in the drills and integrate it into your actual swimming. This is the final step in the change process and it's just as important as the others. Without it, you won't get the results you're looking for. Now, let's get practical. So what does this actually look like? Last time I showed you the five biggest mistakes that triathletes make with their swimming. We're gonna look at number five, which is swimming flat, and I'm gonna show you how to create change fast. First, we need to pick the best drills to solve the problem. We're gonna choose underwater recovery because it helps you learn how to rotate and it helps you learn to rotate at the right time. More importantly, it's very similar to regular freestyle, helping you transfer what you learned during the drill and take it into your freestyle much easier. To make that transition even easier, we're going to include over-under freestyle as well. That's where you recover one arm over the water and one arm under the water. It's the perfect bridge between underwater recovery and regular freestyle. As we go, we're going to change speed, we're going to change stroke counts, and we're going to use gear. Then we're going to add in freestyle and we'll use the same strategies. In the first set, we're going to change up the drills by including different hand positions. You'll use closed fists on some repetitions and upside down paddles on the others. You'll also perform both exercises back to back. During the freestyle, you're going to change it up by increasing speed on some repetitions and reduce your stroke count on others. There's a lot of variability here. In set number two, we're going to change the equipment again, sometimes using a buoy and sometimes not. The kick is a key contributor to the rotation, so you're going to need to figure out how to rotate without using much of a kick. Then on the freestyle swim, you're going to go a little bit longer and try to get faster each round. Right after that faster swim, you're going to switch it up and try to stay as long as possible. On the third set, you'll perform the exercises and freestyle together and try to get faster as you go. On the longer swims, you'll contrast speed during the drill and length during the freestyle. It's all working on the same skills, all in different contexts. These are three different sets that will feel and be very different. Yet they're all focused on the same goal using the same drills. You don't need 15 different drills to get the results you want. You don't want to use 15 drills if you do want to get results. You want to perform the most effective drills in different contexts so that you can gain mastery over the skill you're trying to learn. And you want to be swimming freestyle constantly. That way you can integrate what you're experiencing during the drills into your swimming. And that's what really counts. Just doing drills isn't going to work. If you want to take it to the next level in less time while using less effort, you're going to need a different approach. If you want to see these same strategies applied to improving your pull all at an even deeper level, be sure to grab my free resource, Developing a Powerful Pull, which is available in the link in the video description below. It's available for free and will help you improve your pull dramatically and quickly. As always, keep it simple and keep getting better.